hello everyone it's come to my attention that there's you know several students who are struggling with uh, creating the prop so I'm actually just going to create a prop in this video you're welcome to create your own prop you're welcome to follow along and just create this prop that's also okay um, and at the very least hopefully this will help you understand the workflow that you should uh, be using right generally speaking <clears throat> so I'm gonna make a wind chime right a wind chime could go uh, wherever it could be, just be decorative, it could go inside, it could be outside in pretty much any environment. And then once you get to texturing, you could choose to make it out of different materials and age it differently depending on what your environment is. Um, so I'm going to start off by making like an S hook that will hold the wind chime up. Um, and I haven't bothered to try and model this yet, so you'll kind of go through my experimentation uh, with this. Should be a rather simple model. Um, so for the S hook, I think I'll grab a s cylinder, um, I'll hit W and move this up a little bit. Then I'll hit control D, which is the shortcut for duplicate. <clears throat> I'm going to select one, hit F to focus in on it, go to face mode and I'll select the top and bottom faces and delete them. And then I'll do the same for this one. Whoops. Face mode. And I guess I could have done this first and then duplicated. That's okay. Let's move these down like this. Um, and then we will grab these faces here, the bottom right quarter. And then this one, I'll grab the bottom, let's see. I'll grab the top left quarter of the faces like this. Hit delete. Now I've got that sort of general shape. I'll go to object mode, select both, and then in my modeling toolkit, I'll um, click on combine. Now they're the same object. Then I'll go to edge mode, select one edge, move it away a little, and then click on my target weld tool, drag this edge to that edge and connect them. Now they're connected. Notice that some of the faces are facing the opposite direction. That's because by default polygons are one-sided. So I will go ahead and this will make one half smaller um, in the end, but um, I think the top half being smaller would be good. So I'll select just these faces and then I'll go to um, edit mesh, no, no, mesh display reverse. Then I'll go back to object mode, hit R, scale this down. Again, this is like an S hook that will hang the chimes. Then I'll hit Control E, which is the same as clicking on Extrude, and I'll click on the word Thickness and drag this to get the thickness that I want. Something like that is good. And I guess I'll take, I'll double click on these edges here. So I've got all four corner edges, and then I'll also grab these edges on the ends so I don't create any end gons and then I will bevel them like this. And I don't want to add a ton of geometry to this, so this is this is great. All right, so the S hook is done for now. I'm going to move it to the side. Let's go ahead and create um, the piece that will uh, like hold the chimes underneath it, which I'll grab a cylinder again. I'm going to hit R to go to scale mode, and I'm going to select this square here to scale just in the Z and the X. And I'll scale it up like this and then make it a bit thinner. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and X, and that's a shortcut for clicking on the multi cut tool right here. I'll hold Control and I'm going to middle mouse click, which will drop it exactly in the center right there, that edge loop. Then I'll uh, hit Q to go to my selection tool, double click on this edge loop, hold shift, double click on this edge loop, uh, bevel it like this, and I can play with a fraction. Let's increase it a little bit. Maybe I didn't need that center edge. Let's go ahead and I'm going to take this, double click. Let's see what. Yeah, I actually don't need this. So. I'm just going to double click on that, hold control and hit delete. And we want to make sure our stuff is optimized as much as possible. All right. So there's that piece. Let's go ahead and take this, um, S hook. I'm going to hit E and then I'm going to hold J, um, 
and that turns on step snapping, and then I can rotate this so it rotates to 90 degrees. Alternatively, I can go to my channel box, select this, and then type 90 and rotate X, right? And that will flip it up or, yeah, whatever way you ended up doing it. Um, I'm going to center the pivot, and I'm going to freeze the transformations, which will turn this right side up again. And that's that little snowflake right here. All right. So the pivot point is currently dead center. That's good. I'm going to turn on wireframe on shaded, which is this little icon right here. Now I can see the wireframe even when something isn't selected. I want this to be dead center over top of the middle here. So I'm going to select the S hook, hit W to make sure I'm in my move tool. Then I'm going to click on this square like this. And once I've clicked on that square, it's yellow, meaning it's highlighted. Now I'm going to hold V for vertex snapping and middle mouse click and drag over this vertex and that will snap it over there. It should not have snapped down, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to pull this up like so. Um, higher. We'll make the strings later. I'll take this, pull this up here. And let's make another piece to hook onto this. So I will create, let's see. I'm going to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, um, Pipe. I'm just kind of winging this, so we'll see how it goes. So I've got the pipe. Select the pipe. Select the Channel Box Layer Editor. Underneath Inputs, there's this Poly Pipe 1. I'm going to click on that. Whoops. Um, scroll down a little. So Radius, I can control this, control how big it is, and Thickness, I'm going to decrease the thickness a little bit, something like this. Subdivisions axis, I'm going to change this to 4, like that. Um, yeah, that's good. So then I'll select this, hit R to scale it down, like so. And then I'm going to select all of these edges and bevel them. Increase the fraction a little. Let's, let's go to object mode and scale this down a little bit more. Now I can bring this up here and let's go ahead and I hit F to focus in on that. E to rotate, hold J, snap this at 90 and just kind of place this. Doesn't have to be perfect. Something like that. Cool. All right. That's good. Let's go ahead and you can make whatever weight you wanted, um, but essentially the piece that will... Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and make the chimes. So I'll use another cylinder. I want to think about how big these chimes are going to be, so I'll scale, scale this up a little, maybe something like this, kind of fat, which always looks nice. Um, just chunky looks better inside of a game engine. It will read better, okay? That's what I mean. All right, so I'll go here, slow this down a little. Then I'll go to uh, vertex mode and select just these bottom verts. And I'm gonna go to my side view. I hit spacebar to do that, and then I hovered over the view I wanted and hit spacebar. And you can come in and out of these views by tapping spacebar, okay? If you ever lose a view, like let's say you you lose your perspective view that you can rotate around in, you can go to Panels, Perspective, and click on PERSP for Perspective, and that'll fix it, okay? So let's go back here and bring this down like so. There's one chime. All right. Um, let's move this inward a little bit. I want all the chimes to be different length. That way they're theoretically different tones, right? When the wind hits them, when the weight hits them. Um, and let's see. Excuse me. Let's go ahead and add. This is not a prop that's going to be like viewed close up. So we can kind of be fake it a little bit. Um, so I guess at first I'm going to select, I'm going to hold tab 
go to face mode, hold tab, and then drag to select those faces. Then I'll hit control E, and I'm gonna uh, click on the word offset and drag this in. And then I'll hit control E again to extrude, and then I'll hit W and pull this down. I don't need this to go all the way down. The player's never gonna see that, but just for my peace of mind. And then I'm gonna do something similar down here. So hold, uh, click off, hold tab, click and drag, control E, offset this inward. Um, if you're offset, when you click on this, if it's too sensitive, you can click on this little circle right here and the less blue is in the circle, the less sensitive it's going to be. So you can just click on this until there's, you know, less blue. All right, then I'll hit Control E again, and whoops, um, grab the word, hit W, and pull this up a little ways. That way, if the player looks up there, you know, it looks like it's hollow. <coughs> Cool, next there should be like little holes for the string to attach to in here. Um, but we're just going to add little like sort of divots or like little attachment points. So I'm gonna create another cylinder, hold J, rotate it 90 degrees, and the X looks like, um, freeze its transformations, bring this up, move it to the side, focus in on it. Uh, I'm going to hit Control-1 to isolate this. Let's see how it's the only thing visible now? That's Control-1. It's the same as clicking on uh, this little Isolate Select button. Then I will scale this like so. The player will never see these back faces, so I'm going to select them by holding Tab and painting the selection, and then hit Delete. Um, that's good. And I could do more with this, but... Well, let's just give it a little, I'm going to select these, and then I'll um, thickness, or uh, control E to extrude, offset this inward, control E, and then pull this in a little bit, and that's fine. Then I hit control 1 again to turn, um, turn that off. This is going to be a rather small hole, right, for the string to go through. And honestly, there are too many sides on this. Um, so let's fix that now, actually. We don't need this to be super high res. So I'm going to hold shift and double click on every other edge. And what I should have done is do this before I did all the modeling. It would make it very easy, but it's okay. I'm just going to do it now. So once I've got every other edge, I'm going to hold control. And while holding control, hit delete. That'll make sure I get rid of any vertices that are attached to those uh, edges. Okay. Then let's put this, just kind of shove it in there like so. And that height looks good. Then we will um, control D to duplicate, right? E to rotate, hold J, rotate this 100 degrees, W, and bring this over to this side. And that will be... Let's actually select all these pieces and hit Control-1. And I want to make sure that this is centered. And, oops. So I'm going to select just one. Select this direction, hold V, and middle mouse click and drag so it's perfectly centered along that axis. And I'll do the same thing over here. There we go. And they're at the same height, so that's good. I'm going to select the whole thing and just to keep things a bit organized so I don't accidentally leave one, I'm going to um, go to Modeling Toolkit, select all of these, and hit Combine. Then I'll recenter the pivot, which I'm going to change in a second. Then I'll hit Control-1. <coughs> I want a total of six of these. I want a total of six of these going all the way around, and each one will vary in height. Um, so to do that quickly, I'm going to select the one I've just completed, and then I'm going to hit D as in delta to unlock the pivot, okay? So the pivot is now unlocked. I'm going to click on this arrow. That arrow is now selected, right? I can move it just in that direction. I'm going to hold V for vertex snapping, and I'm going to vertex snap it. See how I can middle mouse click and drag? 
and I'm not actually needing to drag on the arrow, right? I can just, as long as this arrow is selected, I can hold the middle mouse click and drag so that it's on the center vertex of the uh, of this plate. So now that, <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, so that's good. So then I'll hit D again to lock the pivot in place. And you can see that if I were to rotate this, it's going to rotate around, <clears throat> right? So I'll undo, and then I'm going to select this. Now that I know the pivot's over here, and go to Edit, and then by Duplicate Special, I'm going to click on the option box next to Duplicate Special. Here, I want to make sure it's set to Copy, and Rotation. I want there to be 6, so 360 degrees divided by 6 is 60. So I'll change this to, let's see, X, Y. So we need to rotate in the in the Y, I think. Let's see, 60. And then we want there to be a total of six. So number of copies is five because we already have one. I'll hit apply. And yeah, that worked. Okay, so again, here's what I used. I selected this. I went to the duplicate special option box, make sure that's set the copy. Change this to 60, set this to 5, hit Duplicate Special. All right, each of these needs to be a different length, so let's do that now. I'm going to, we'll get, they'll be longer and longer, so um, let's see. Let's scale this down. And we could do this in a very precise way, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to. Pardon me, just kind of eyeball it. So what I'm doing is I'm going to object mode, or I'm going to vertex mode, excuse me, selecting the bottom verts, and then hitting W and dragging them down, right? So we get something that looks like this. Cool. All right, we're getting there. All right, next let's make the weight that will hit in between and I'm going to take this hit control D hit W and drag this down scale it um, in like this and this is let's make it a little thicker so I scaled it in let's scale it up to actually I'm going to undo control D sorry I'm gonna move this down to where I want it somewhere around here scale Instead of scaling this way, um, I'm going to click on the screen, this box right here. That way I don't change the thickness. Uh, so something like this. And then we'll have a, I'm going to select all of this and move it up even higher. Whoops. No, I'm not. Um, yeah, that's all right. Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm going to turn the grid off for a second, and I can do that quickly by checking on this box here. The grid's off now. Next, I'm going to create a cube, and we need a... So this is actually like the thing that clangs in, right? Now we need a weight um, that kind of helps pull it around and catches the wind. So I create a cube. I'm going to scale this cube up like this. And hit E, and let's rotate this 45 degrees. Um, hold J. I can come over here to make sure I actually get that correct. Rotate it uh, 45. Great. Now let's make sure. Let's uh, select this. Click on the freeze transformations. Um, let's select both of these, hit control one, and let's go to a top view, actually. Let's select both of these. Go to this view, control one, let me hit four. Okay, it is centered, so I don't have to worry about it. I just want to make sure that's all centered. See, that's from the top. Space bar, space bar, control one. Okay. Um, let's see, am I forgetting anything? So the only thing left to do are the strings. So let's do that. Um, cool. 
All right, so I'm going to select this. I'm actually going to make this a little bit thicker, like more substantial. So I'm just going to R and scale this up a little bit. Um, and maybe I'll go to face mode and select one face, hold shift, double click on the next one to grab that face loop. And uh, let's scale this out just a little, make it more pronounced. Cool. Um, so I looked at an image of a, I looked at a couple images of wind chimes to get some reference. And often they'll have separate strings or whatever just to attach this piece to this piece. And then underneath here, there's like, often there'll be like staples or other hooks um, or just like little holes to sort of weave string through all of all of this, okay? And then there'll be a single string that runs from the center down to here. And then there's like a knot or something inside of this and then two strings that come down and loop through this, all right? So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> look at this real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the multi-cut tool, control shift X, or you can go over here, multi-cut tool. I'm going to select this um, vertex and then select this vertex, right click to finish that, and then do the same thing here. And let's do the same thing on the other side. So you hover over the vert until it's red, you click, then you hover over the other vert, you click, you right click. Then I will go to vertex mode and I'm gonna select this vertex and the one on the other side. I will hit um, this bevel tool, which will chamfer that vert and split it open. Um, then I'll go to face mode and select both of these faces, scale them in like this with this one so I don't change the thickness. Then I'll hit W and move this up here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'll hit delete. Now I've got a hole in here and quads all around the hole. Then I'll go to edge mode, grab these two edges and bridge them together. And then I'll select these three edges and these three edges and whoops, bridge them together as well. Now I've got a hole running through here. Let's go ahead and select those edges, shift, double click and get those edges and bevel them. That looks good. And then let's double click on this edge, shift, double click this edge, shift, double click, shift, double click. And let's bevel these as well. And we still have only quads, so that's exactly what we want. So something like this is good. Um, and let's actually go back to our multi-cut tool, hold control, middle mouse click over here. Go back to um, our selection tool by hitting Q, double click on this edge loop, bevel it. Because it's not an angle, it will just split it. And then I'm going to adjust the, uh, whoops, adjust the fraction, something like this. I'll go to face mode, click on one face, hold shift, double click on another face um, right next to it to get that entire face loop. And then I will scale it outward a little bit to make the shape more interesting. Cool. All right, let's make the string that connects from here down to here. Okay, so I'm going to create a cube. There it is. I'm going to scale this down considerably. So it's quite thin. We'll start there, we might scale it down more later and I'll pull this up to the top like this. I'll hit F to zoom in on it, select this bottom face and drag it down um, to where it needs to be. And let's move it over a little. Let's see. I think that's too thick still. So let's, uh, I undid the move and then I'll select this, hit R, and I'm going to scale just in the X and the Z. So I'll use this and scale this in. That's better, yeah. All right, then I can right click and hold, go to vertex mode, drag down here. I know that, whoops, I know that the vertices I want are down here, so I'll just drag. Then I'll hit W and move this out. I'll hit F to focus in, and I want this to be kind of lined up a bit. And I can move this up here like so, 
we don't need this to be perfect. Um, and then I'll go back to object mode. And let's see, I'll just hit control D to duplicate. And then I'll hit E to rotate. And then I'll hold J and rotate this 180 degrees. I'll go to the channel box, rotate Y 180. That way I know I've got it correct. Now you can see they're lined up pretty well. Then I can select both of these. Um, then I'll go to the modeling toolkit and combine them. Then I'll go to vertex mode, select these bottom verts, and it looks like I need to bring them down further, like, like here. And then I'll hit Control Shift X, which opens up the multi cut tool. I'll hold Control, drop an edge here, drop an edge here. Then I'll go to face mode and select, whoops, face mode, and select this face and this face, and then I'll hit bridge, and it will bridge between them. Uh, then I'll go to, I'm gonna hit object mode, select this piece, hit control one to isolate it. Then I'll go to edge mode, select this corner edge and this one, hit control one again, and then I can move this kind of up, or not that far, like this, and then, um, yeah, I could. Do I want to bother with that? Um, okay, I guess I'll control. Uh, I'm not going to bother with it. I mean, we could add an edge loop here and then make this form fit better, but let's just move forward. So I'm going to go to my target weld, and I'll target weld this edge to here and this edge to here. This edge to here, this edge to here. Um, you know what? Yeah, I will do that. So I'm going to multi cut tool, drop an edge loop there, multi cut tool, drop one here, um, grab this edge, select up, hold V, middle mouse click and drag to snap that. Same thing, that edge, hold V, middle mouse click and drag to snap that. Then I can take um, these verts, make sure those are the only ones I have selected and then scale them in to better match the form like this and then i can take this edge and this edge and scale it in and move it up a little okay that just makes me feel better <laughs> um all right uh so we've got this one done and so let's examine what's happening at the top real quick. I'm going to go to vertex mode and select these verts, hit F to focus in. And so they intersect right here. So let's actually take, let's create an edge loop here and one here. Um, and then let's go to face mode and delete these faces. Now I've got just this top here, <clears throat> and then I'll go to edge mode, select the top face, and uh, then this side face, and um, bridge, and I'll do the same here, <clears throat> hold select, and then a bridge. Let's target weld, and then choose center, and then snap those together like that um, and then I'm going to create I'm going to go to my multi cut tool create an edge loop here and one here and then I will hit Q go to my go to edge mode and bridge those together and give this one division And I'll do the same thing over here. Bridge one division. If you ever get this green, that means it doesn't know what material it's supposed to have. So all you have to do is you can just select the entire object, right click and uh, right click and hold. Let me do it up here. Right click and hold, assign existing material Lambert one, and that will fix it. Um, let's take all these verts 
hit R and scale them flat into itself. Uh, and same with these, flatten them to make it nice and organized. Then I'm going to go to my target weld tool and change this back to target. Weld this, whoops, click off, weld this here, weld this here. And now I can um, <clears throat> go back to edge mode, select these opposing edges, and bridge, and bridge. And I know the player will never see this face, so I can delete it. And are these separate? What's going on here? Yeah, so for some reason, those aren't together. So I'm going to click and drag, make sure I only get those, and then go up to Merge Vertices, Merge Vertices to Center. And then I'll do that for each of these. Um, and then down here, we have some similar issues. Merge to Center. Hmm. Target weld. That needs to weld there. Delete this and delete this. I'm not sure why that's not working, but let's try and fix it this way. I don't want there to be a hole in my mesh. I'm going to select those two edges after I delete that face and bridge and select these and bridge. That still didn't fix it. Let's delete this face instead. Select these two and bridge. There we go. Delete that face. Double click on this edge. Bridge. Okay, that, that fixed it. All right, so. Delete these two faces, select this edge, hold shift, select that edge, bridge, double click, uh, bridge. There we go. Now we don't have any holes in the mesh except for the top, which the player will never see. Okay, so that piece is done. Um, let's actually, while we're here, before I forget, with it selected, go to mesh display, soften edge. And you'll see that if I turn this off, it makes it so that we can't necessarily see those hard edges even though it's only four sides <clears throat> so it looks a lot rounder now okay i'm going to turn this back on all right let's do the string that goes up and what i'm going to do actually is select this string hit Control one to isolate it focus in on it um, let's actually go to vertex mode select these top verts right here um, and what I want to do is create a string that's the exact same size. So I'm actually going to temporarily select these two edges and bridge across to create that face again. Sorry. Um, and then I'll select this face and I'll go to Edit Mesh, um, Extract. What that did is it pulled off this face as its own model. Um, so I'm going to select this face and then click on this icon here to center the pivot. Right, so now I can move this up and down. Then I'll hit Control-1 again and pull this up. And then I'll hit Control-E to extrude and hit W and pull this up. And let's pull this just straight up into here and grab these or the face or the verts on the bottom and pull this straight down. Then I'll go to Object Mode object mode control one now we can get rid of uh, this face because the player will never see it and this face control one again that's done object mode select the object mesh display um, soften edge 
All right, let's go ahead and take this. We're going to duplicate, or let's center the pivot first. Then I'll duplicate it, Control D, um, and I'll move it out here. And let's take the verts on the bottom and scale them up. And the verts on the top are fine. Let's leave them there. Um, and we want to. Let's see. We want to move this inward like this to line up with this sort of fake hole we have on the side of the uh, tube, the chime itself. And I'll go to vertex mode and drag this in here. And I'll hit Control Shift X, multi cut this here. Grab these verts and pull them out like this and down. And then these can kind of, uh, these can be rotated a little bit and then just shoved in here. That's fine the way that is. Now we might have to change the angle of this. Let's test it out. So I'm going to hit Control D and then. Um, rotate this 180 degrees, 180, and it's not actually going to, it's going to be, yeah, we need it to kind of go in there. So we have to find the center point. Let's start by getting this over here. Yeah, so essentially I just move this piece until it's kind of similarly placed as this piece, and let's actually adjust this so it's more centered, like this, this one, more centered like that. And now we can come up here, and actually that's pretty good. Like most chimes I'm seeing have this gap, right? And then in between, the, they're either going up into a hole and then weaving back down, or they're stapled on. So this is this is good. So let's take both of these, we'll go to Mesh Display, uh, Soften Edge, and then select them both again, Modeling Toolkit, uh, Combine, nice, and then we need a bunch of these, right? So we need one, two, three, four, five more. So we're going to do the same technique as we did before and see if that works. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to select just this and just this. Hit Control-1. I'm going to hit D to unlock the pivot. And I'm going to vertex snap the pivot. Something strange is going on. D. Make sure you only have this selected. I think I had both selected. Um, vertex snap the pivot over here. It's okay if it snaps all the way up there. I'll hit D again. Um, then I'll select this. Uh, I'm going to hit Control once so I can see everything. And I'm actually going to save my work um, while I'm thinking about it. And I'll just name this Chimes. That way, if I crash or something, I don't lose a bunch of work. Um, okay. Then I'll go to Edit. Click on the option box next to Duplicate Special. Uh, the same options. Hit Apply. And that worked. Nice. Awesome. Okay, that worked well. All right. Uh, so that's good. <clears throat> next, let's actually... Do we want to reuse these? Let's actually take the center one. Control D to duplicate it. Move it up and yeah, move it up here. Grab vertex up here, move it like so. We'll get that later. Grab these verts and let's pull them out like this.
and we'll grab these, hold them here. Let's control D to duplicate, rotate this 180 degrees. That's good. Select both. Uh, modeling toolkit combine control one to isolate just this let's fix this mess I'm going to take I'm going to take um, I'm going to select the faces here and just so it's like a vertex no Target weld. Yeah, we don't want that. Um, modeling, let's go to our um, multi cut tool, hold control, drop an edge here and here. Then go to uh, face mode and select these faces and delete them. <coughs> go to um, vertex mode, select all of these, hit R to scale them flat with each other. And then go to edge mode and grab these these two edges and move them down and these two edges move them down a little bit and uh, that's good and then we can double click on that edge double click on this and bridge between them and let's give it an extra division and change the curve type to blend Oh, it's like twisting all over the place. That's odd. Shouldn't do that. Uh, taper. We won't blend it. We'll just do this for now. Select the object in object mode. Right click and hold. Assign existing material. Lambert 1. Uh, Control Shift X for the multi cut tool. Control middle mouse click. Grab this edge. And uh, move it up like so. Take this and um, mesh display, soften edge. Then we will see duplicate this, control D, rotate it a little bit like this. <coughs> Excuse me. That's good. Um, take these and combine them. Pardon me. Control D to duplicate, and we want to rotate this 90 degrees. So I'll change this to 90. <coughs> um, let's grab the, go to vertex mode, select all these bottom verts, and pull them down into the top. Let's take this and let's rotate the entire thing. Or actually, let's select all these and for now we'll combine them. We might separate them later. Um, make sure their pivot is centered. <coughs> and then let's rotate it something like this. Yeah, that looks more organized with the strings down below. <coughs> oh my goodness, sorry I'm coughing so much. I've gotten a little sick, and I want to get this done for you guys. Uh, okay, cool. So this is looking this is looking good for the model uh, for now. We could obviously push this much more, but let's just keep it like this. It's, this is great. Um, in the next video, I'm going to UV unwrap it, um, and I'll start that right now. All right. Um, I'll see you there.